applications. He has extensive experience implementing, managing, and consulting with customers that use ERP applications to manage and improve their business. Now, before we get into the meat of today's materials, uh, I'm going to provide a quick plug for ourselves. OSI is a 24-year-old global professional services firm with about 1,400 employees. We are an Oracle Platinum partner, and we work with a variety of technologies. Today, you are hearing from our Oracle Applications Group that's focused on Oracle Cloud Up applications and EBS solutions. Now, if you have questions, uh, please type them into our chat located on the, uh, typically on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, and we will be answering those questions at the end of the webinar. So once again, as Dibby runs through uh, his slides and presentation, feel free to ask questions. Uh, we will be taking them in order at the end. So uh, with that, um, I see we have our agenda up. So I'm going to pass our webinar over to Dibby. Uh, Dibby, are you there? Yeah, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you once again for joining. Um, we'll start off our session with uh, just the objectives of today's session, just a couple slides on what we are hoping to achieve, and then jump into our EBS versus ERP cloud comparison on inventory and manufacturing. So picture that I like to show, um, what we are hoping to achieve is to enhance your perspective. All of us have heard about cloud. I'm sure some of you have seen some demos from some modules. You cannot be today in Oracle's EBS world and not have heard at least the Oracle people talking about cloud. You go to OAUG, OW, I mean everywhere it's just cloud, cloud. And uh, I'm sure, uh, just like me, uh, you probably have different perspectives of the cloud depending on what you have seen. And what we are trying to do in our series is enhance your perspective to something that gives you a holistic picture of what the application does. What we don't want to do and what we hope we are definitely not doing is a sales pitch. We are not trying to sell you cloud or tell you to go and buy cloud or you know invest in ERP cloud. Those, those are decisions that for you to make based on things that we let tell you in terms of uh, benefits for going or not, not disincentives for not going. So uh, that's your decision, but we definitely are not making a sales pitch on the cloud. Uh, sticking to the theme of the elephant that you saw before, what we want to do in this session is just highlight the differences. So I'll be walking through some of the differences in uh, between the ERP cloud inventory and manufacturing modules with EBS. Uh, whatever I don't talk about, you can pretty much assume that those haven't changed. So if there are certain things, these are both pretty large modules. Those of you who have been working in these modules know that they would take half a day to cover each one in detail. So if I've not talked about some area, you can, you know that it's probably because there is no major difference between EBS and ERP cloud in those areas. So we're just going to talk about things that I feel are different based on my knowledge of EBS and uh, the cloud. So context to the modules that we're going to talk about, uh, this is um, Oracle's ERP cloud, SCM suite as they call it, so this cloud supply chain management. And it has a bunch of different products. Uh, there is product lifecycle management, which is nothing but the inventory, uh, inventory and item master. There is uh, procurement, manufacturing, order management. Uh, there's logistics to manage all of your shipping and warehousing. And then there is uh, all layering all of that is the inventory management. So the modules that we are going to talk about today are manufacturing and inventory. Uh, all of that is, of course, underlaid by Oracle's technological framework around social, mobile, and the analytics. Those are pretty much common across all of the modules, and the way those uh, are implemented are pretty much common across the modules. A little bit of a context on uh, the release maps and how they mapped out. Oracle first came out with some semblance of an inventory module on the Fusion Cloud in release 8. This was about, uh, I would say, about three years ago. It didn't have a lot of inventory functionality. It was a little bit um, just defining items that could be used in procurement. The real inventory management actually came with release 10. Um, 
where uh, once they introduced their code to cache and uh, distributed order or orchestration along with inventory. And release 11, in my mind, is where uh, things really uh, took sh some kind of shape, both in manufacturing uh, and in inventory, as well as with planning and order management. The latest release, uh, for those of you who don't know, the latest release is release 13. That was released, I guess, about officially released about six months ago and is currently being rolled out to various to their customers. Uh, there are a few upgrades happening as well from release 12 to release 13. And release 13 has pretty much uh, uh, been fleshed out a lot in the supply chain areas. Most of the focus in fleshing out in the last two releases has been in the supply chain. So if you have seen release 11 manufacturing, uh, if you look at release 13, the manufacturing is way more enhanced and much more functionally mature um, in those modules. At a high level, um, uh, just a couple of points to note. Uh, there is no process manufacturing in cloud yet, and I have not seen any timeline yet as to when OPM will be available, if at all. Um, so those of you who are using OPM and want to go to the cloud, um, have either to uh, look at their processes and see if discrete manufacturing can fit the bill or wait till or Oracle really releases OPM on the cloud, which is I don't know when. Um, the second point is uh, WMS was not there as part of the cloud till about a year ago. Oracle acquired this product called Logfire, and that has been incorporated as cloud WMS. There is still a lot of the integration pieces being worked out between Cloud WMS and Fusion Cloud modules, but that's Oracle's go-forward product on WMS. So I have not covered WMS as part of this presentation, by the way. And uh, overall, a point to note is inventory and manufacturing are pretty similar to EBS. So if you have been using inventory and manufacturing on EBS, Everything on Fusion Cloud environment, uh, inventory and manufacturing would look pretty, uh, would, would be recognizable. It would, uh, the overall UI is a little different, but most of the functionality and features are pretty similar. And uh, I guess that concludes our presentation for today. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, there is, it's very similar, uh, so that makes my job easier for the rest of the presentation today. There are some differences, and those are the things I'd like to talk about, as I said. So let's go through uh, the items one by one. Um, first of all, inventory organizations. So this is um, ERP Cloud enterprise structure. Overall, you have uh, legal entities, you have balancing segments, and uh, you have a business, you have business units defined. So I won't go into the enterprise structure in detail. Uh, we've covered that in our financials presentation and probably next year once we have financials, once again, we'll cover that in a little more detail. What I wanted to cover today is uh, the inventory orgs. So the inventory orgs are at the, the bottom layer pretty much. Distribution centers, manufacturing facilities, warehouses, and the common item master. Uh, this is the part of the enterprise structure that would be defined by the inventory orgs. The inventory org structure by itself is pretty similar to EBS. You have uh, an inventory org that would be a, a warehouse or a manufacturing facility uh, that would have sub-inventories for you to hold your inventory in, and uh, you would have locators, the row, rack, bin uh, kind of uh, structure. So that part is pretty similar to EBS. A lot of the terminology is even the same. Uh, just wanted to put this out there uh, to assure folks that are using that structure in all its functionality in the Fusion, I mean in EBS, that you won't uh, lack any functionality in Fusion. Um, a point on the types of organizations. Uh, Fusion gives you two types of organizations. One is an inventory org that uh, requires uh, financial and accounting setups, and you pretty much manage your inventory, so it has all of the regular parameter definitions. And there is an item organization that is for use as master orgs. So you can have multiple master orgs. It only contains definitions of items. 
um, they, you don't in stock material in it. And uh, in, in deployments where, like, if you are implementing planning, for instance, and you have an external ERP system like EBS, but planning is implemented in the cloud, you would use item organizations just to define your items in a shared mode. So wherever you're using inventory in a shared mode, you would use item organizations when you don't need to manage inventory within those. So uh, again, here it's similar to EBS. Uh, I guess uh, using multiple master orgs is a pretty common uh, functionality that you would use in Fusion. Um, another feature on the calendars, you have global calendars that are, um, all calendars are global. They can be created and used across your organizations, and they are shared. Calendars can be assigned to any business unit. So you can have work center calendars, resource level calendars. Uh, you, can, uh, you can have multiple warehouses sharing the same calendar with uh, the start and end times being local. So if you set a calendar from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in New York, it would be applicable from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. New York time or Eastern time, and then in Dublin it would follow uh, the UK time or uh, GMT, whatever you, you were following. So the working time is local to the assigned business objects. So you, you can have calendars used in multiple business, business objects, as I said, you can have the calendars assigned to your manufacturing plant as a production calendar. You can have work center calendars or even resource level calendars. Uh, you can have calendars in your inventory organizations for shipping, receiving, and work days. And you can even have calendars for your trading partners. So you can actually specify separate supplier calendars, uh, customer calendars, and carrier calendars. Now this becomes pretty critical in today's world where there's a lot of supply chain activity, especially with contract manufacturing. So you can have a pretty detailed level of control over how your, uh, your calendar with your contract manufacturer works, or even your supplier, for instance. And these calendars are then taken into consideration during your planning, supply chain planning, for example. It would actually look at what days your suppliers uh, ship product, um, or what your um, what days are working days for your uh, for your subcontract uh, site to accordingly then plan the production or plan the supply. So this uh, the trading partner calendars are pretty useful in uh, in the fusion side. Coming to items. Uh, the one thing that you can do, uh, and it's managed pretty well, there, there is ways to do this in EBS as well, but I think it's managed pretty well in Fusion in a much more cleaner fashion, is uh, life cycle phases. You can define different life cycle phases for your item. Um, every item must have at least one life cycle phase associated with it, and you can have different classes of items, obviously, just like EBS and each class can have a list of life cycle phases associated with it. So if you have, um, uh, you know, items in finished goods, let's say you, you classify your items as finished goods and raw materials, and you have different life cycle phases associated with finished goods materials as opposed to uh, raw materials, uh, you can have those set up, and every time you define a finished goods, it will acquire those phases, and you can actually move items from one phase to the next. So life cycle phases are uh, created um, by the user, so you, for every organization you can decide how many phases you want and um, which class should have how many phases, and you, can, you have a screen that allows you to define, create phases, and then assign them to different classes based on the items that are in that class. Uh, another pretty neat feature um, in Fusion is you can create multiple items. So there is a screen that allows you to, uh, in a tab with, with a tabular form, that allows you to create multiple items in one shot. Now this is one feature that a lot of our customers find uh, useful uh, because uh, it gives you, it, it's not as easy to use as in Excel, but it's it's up there. You can create items uh, in bulk, it's much more easier to create items than having to go through the uh, one form at a time and, 
as in EBSS cases through multiple forms. So here is one screen in which you can do, you know, five to seven items at a time or even more, depending on the way you configure the screen. Uh, one area where um, uh, there has been a lot of added functionality, I think, on the Fusion site is on catalogs and categories. Uh, again, this is uh, this is available in EBS as well. You do have catalogs and categories uh, in EBS, but the way catalogs and hierarchies are maintained, and even the categories and the uh, hierarchical categories are maintained in Fusion, I think is is better managed than in EBS. So a catalog is essentially a mechanism for identifying a collection of items. So you could have uh, an e-commerce catalog, you could have like a spares catalog, and within an e-commerce catalog, you can have a winter catalog, a summer catalog, etc. So you can have hierarchies of catalogs that you you can use in your organization. And within catalogs, you can have then categories. So under a master catalog, you can have a subdivision of categories where again, you can have a breakdown, you know, in the, using our previous example, uh, your e-commerce catalog and under winter catalog, you can have shoes and gloves or outerwear in one and, um, you know, uh, sports goods in the other. So you can have different kinds of cate uh, categories within the catalog. And these can be used for internal products as well as external that you sell um, to your customers. So the way the catalogs and categories are arranged are in hierarchies. You have a master item catalog, which, and then you have multiple catalogs, as, as many as you, you need to define with as many levels as you need to define within them, within your catalog structure. And within each catalog, you can again have as many categories and hierarchies of categories as you need, as I said. It's laid out pretty well with a lot of search, built-in search capabilities. And a lot of this can be used in uh, assigning in both your uh, reporting as well as in the way you use functionally use your application. So once you create catalogs, uh, just like in EBS, you have inventory, uh, you, you have an inventory catalog, you have a purchasing catalog. Here you can assign catalogs to different functional areas. And uh, you can, uh, you have the ability to decide which catalog goes to which functional area and can accordingly drive all of the reporting and the functionality in those areas using these catalogs. You can also use the catalogs and categories within those business areas to run some of your subledger accounting if needed, if you wanted to manage some of your subledgers that way. Moving on to uh, the next topic, product structure. Uh, so product structure is essentially bill of material uh, as known in EBS, in Fusion uh, or in ERP Cloud, it is called product structure. Again, the BOM uh, and the way it is maintained as product structures in Fusion is pretty similar to EBS. A uh, couple things to note here, an item can have a multiple, uh, unlimited number of user-defined structures. So you can have multiple BOMs um, defined uh, within uh, within the same org uh, for the same item. So you can have a bomb for each business purpose. All items, uh, uh, sorry, all the product structures are org specific. So within the org, you can have multiple uh, bombs for one, maybe one for production, one for planning, one for engineering, and you can have as many as you need for each business purpose. Uh, what is mandatory when you use product structures uh, or bombs is that every item must have a primary product structure. And then you can have the structures linked to various life cycle phases of the item. So an item can have, um, you know, a product structure maybe in the, in the design phase and a second one in the engineering phase. Uh, the third, there may be a demo product structure for that item. So every life cycle phase of that item could have a different project, product structure and it's validated against those. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can define a common structure uh, that is maintained in one org. It's, it's like a common bomb. And you maintain that in one org and it is shared by reference in other organizations. So you don't need to copy it 
to every organization that are using it as long as uh, it is maintained as a common uh, common bomb any changes made to that common structure in that org will reflect to in every other organization that that structure is used in so that that's a pretty neat feature as well um a lot of the bomb definition uh, the where used the reference designators and the attributes are pretty similar to ebs uh, substitutes is one area which i found it is managed better uh, in fusion you can define uh, item substitutes or other component substitutes within the same uh, for the same um, uh, bomb in uh, different orgs you can define different item substitutes uh, at a, a component substitutes at a bomb level so items this may not be an item level substitution but it could just be a, a component substitution within a specific product structure for a specific org and uh, and then this is again handled within the manufacturing module as well as within planning in uh, depending on the where use condition Uh, material control attributes, which is uh, the things that you, may, you see mentioned here, the supply type, the sub-inventory, default, the default sub-inventory, the default locators, uh, the operation sequence in which this material is used, and whether this is used in cost roll-up. These are typically maintained at an org level. And uh, you can actually uh, either decide to maintain it at an org level or maintain for common structures, maintain it at a master level, so to speak. So when you set up a common structure uh, for the item, uh, for, for a specific assembly, you can then define whether you want to allow the attribute updates at an org level. So certain attributes can be maintained by at an org level, for example, include and cost roll-up is typically a master level um common bo common product structure attribute whereas uh, the locator uh, the default locator could be an org level attribute so the way you manage the material control attributes um is is pretty granular uh, right down bet varying between the uh, orgs and the common product structures that you use Uh, moving on to inventory management, so that pretty much covers uh, most of the setups related to inventory, um, the items, the, uh, the product structures, and uh, the various item, different inventory attributes. Moving to inventory management, um, again, uh, pretty similar to EBS, a uh, couple of things where I found more flexibility. Uh, one is the inventory transaction types. Uh, these can there are predefined inventory transaction types and then you can also have user defined and a transaction type is essentially a combination of the transaction source and a transaction action so if you see here there are a few examples of um, uh, of the seeded transaction types so a purchase order receipt for instance has a transaction source as purchase order and the action is received into stores uh, so the receipt into stores uh, has uh, has two transaction sources, one from purchase order and one from inventory, uh, if, if you see in this table, resulting in one case uh, from a purchase order receipt and the second case is a miscellaneous receipt. So um, you can have your own user-defined transaction types uh, and then you can link all kinds of your accounting uh, which are the default accounts related to a transaction type, those can also be set up um, just like in the EBS, in EBS. But the way this transaction types are managed and generated, uh, I think is, uh, is much better and has, is more flexible in Fusion. The other area is um, the reservations. Uh, EBS obviously supports reservations. Uh, but I think there is more flexibility in reservations on uh, Fusion. You, you have multiple supply type sources for reserving. You can reserve on-hand inventory, obviously. You can also reserve purchase orders and requisitions. And you can reserve these supplies against your sales orders. You can make reservations against account and account aliases. 
and you can also def have your own user defined reservations so for instance uh, if you want to reserve uh, a specific uh, amount of inventory for a specific customer um, without a sales order for the customer you can define those user defined uh, set up user defined reservations and maybe you can even reserve requisitions for a specific customer so that when POs are generated against that requisition and the inventory is received, uh, that reservation then flows all the way through from requisitions to POs to on hand and then uh, can be applied against that customer. So the reservations and managing reservations is pretty flexible uh, here. I think it's more flexible than what EBS allows. The other um, feature, cool feature, um, which something that I found uh, supersedes CBS. Did I hear something? Okay. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Um, is uh, the way the item quantities is displayed and managed. So the one thing missing with many of our customers as we have implemented EBS in multiple places have complained about is uh, the view that you get into your on-hand quantities. Uh, EBS just doesn't seem to have a single screen where all aspects of the item's inventory, its supply, and its potential uh, demand uh, show up. And um, uh, I think that is something addressed uh, in Fusion currently. You have one single view of items you can uh, view available to transact, available to reserve. You can look at all of your on hand receiving and inbound quantities. You can also view the item uh, on a specific inventory location. You can view the item, lot, serial number, all of the inbound and consigned details. So it pretty much gives you a complete view, a 360 degree view of the item and uh, of the item inventory, where it is coming from, where it is going to and how much you have on hand. Uh, incidentally, there are links on this same view screen to based on your uh, security profile, you could even go and kick off transactions on the item from this uh, view. So you could go and initiate inventory transfers or material issue transactions for, or material cycle counts or physical inventory adjustment transactions from the same uh, view screen. So this page, I think, is uh, is very, very useful um, as compared to what's available on EBS. Uh, the other thing that uh, Fusion has laid out pretty clearly is inventory transactions uh, with and without documents. Uh, you can, uh, you, there are uh, seeded transactions that are without documents, uh, the obvious ones like miscellaneous issue receipts, the sub-inventory transfers, and interrupt transfer and receipt. Uh, and then you can have uh, similar transactions uh, with documents. Now this has become a pretty regular requirement for us even on EBS because um, uh, organizations now because of their supply chain demands have multi-locational uh, warehouses uh, spread across the country, in many cases across the world. And you cannot transfer from one org to another uh, without the requisite paperwork. And uh, Fusion actually recognizes that. So there are, um, in addition to the regular PO receipts, the, all of the transfers and movements between sub-inventories and between orgs can be handled with documents, as with documents being demanded. So you can uh, actually make inventory movement requests where you create a movement request you generate pick slips against a movement request. You physically move the material while it is in, and it manages it while it's in transit. Uh, and then once you receive it, you confirm the pick slip uh, that was actually received. Again, on EBS, we have faced this question multiple times where a warehouse, a receiving warehouse manager wants to have the ability to confirm what was received. And there are ways in EBS to do it, but um, I think Fusion manages this way better with the pick slips and, uh, and the confirmation of the pick slips once the material has actually been received. Uh, again, all of this is supported back end by the accounting, so you know exactly what, what material is, what value of material is in transit at any given point in time. Another area where uh, 
transactions uh, which really useful on the inventory transactions is material status. You can actually create uh, different material status, uh, different material statuses. Um, then an example here, the material status that is created is display sample. And you can dis define what transaction types are allowed to transact that kind of material that's in that status. So a material that is in display sample status, for instance, cannot be issued to a sales order or cannot be transferred to a different sub-inventory. What you could do is, uh, what you could allow is PO receipts, so you can allow POs to be raised for items to be received uh, as display samples. You could um, allow some kind of transfer to owned inventories or you could allow miscellaneous issues. So this is just an example. You can define as many statuses as you want. Uh, it's you, there are user-defined statuses that you can create, and then you can assign them to different status, uh, different transactions. So they have actually a screen that will uh, list all of the existing uh, inventory transactions that you have created uh, and that you are using, and then you can say which ones are allowed and which ones are disallowed. This is a pretty neat feature uh, in Fusion. So that covers uh, inventory and uh, the inventory transactions. Again, uh, I know I'm repeating myself, but as I said, there's not a lot of difference between Fusion and EBS on that, as my presentation would have showed you. There are a few, just a few, you know, additional features in Fusion that is not there in EBS. Uh, coming to manufacturing, now this is the module that Oracle calls Oracle Manufacturing Cloud, and uh, just like EBS, it supports in-house manufacturing, it supports standard or configured products, and it supports build-to-plan or build-to-order. So it supports back-to-back. Um, uh, manufacturing just like back-to-back -back supply just like in uh, EBS. The one thing where uh, which I think it addresses which is not directly addressed in EBS is contract manufacturing. So um, there is a level of uh, outside processing that EBS recognizes and uh, the o those of you that use OSP knows that there is some outside processing functionality that you can use but contract manufacturing specifically is not addressed within the WIP module within EBS, whereas in manufacturing cloud, um, you know, that recognizes and takes that into account. So uh, as an overview to the manufacturing cloud, it's um, all of the functionality that you are used to in EBS is available. You set up the manufacturing plant, plant data, that is all of your resources, work centers, calendars, uh, lead times uh, and uh, uh, the item bombs or structures. You manage, you can monitor and manage discrete production, so basically you can create web jobs. Uh, here in Fusion, the term is work order. Um, in EBS week, it was known as web jobs. And uh, so you, you create your work orders, you manage your work orders. You can execute work orders, so you can progress work orders. You can do work orderless completion even, so you can execute discrete production. And then you can do all of your regular manufacturing costing. So all of the regular cost accounting functionality that's uh, available in EBS is available on paper in Fusion. So you have uh, all your regular inventory and manufacturing costing uh, methods available in Fusion as well. One important difference um, that I wanted to point out, which I thought was is very important in today's world and is a pretty cool feature, is incorporating the social in manufacturing. Now, what I mean here is um, the, there is a lot of uh, social activity that goes into manufacturing, unlike inventory management, which is pretty much an inventory manager uh, by herself managing, um, you know, what what you hold in uh, on hand or what is being received, etc. Um, the manufacturing function is more social. There are a lot of people involved. 
I mean, if you look at the life cycle of a typical work order within the organization, there are probably, even for a small uh, shop floor with, uh, let's say, four work centers uh, or four operations, there are probably, you know, 15 to 20 people that are involved in executing the work order in addition to those that want to know what is the status of the work order, have some opinion or some kind of action that they need to take on the work order or some kind of actions that they need to take based on what the status of the work orders are. Um, it's pretty much for manufacturing organizations, the shop floor pretty much forms the center of their being. And everyone's asking questions about certain things. Hey, what's the, what's the status of you know, this work order for this customer. Or someone wanting to know uh, where a work order is held up, somebody want needing what is the status of certain material coming in and they need to talk to a buyer or get a buyer involved in the process. So a work order, in my mind, is a more social object than any other business object uh, within, within an ERP uh, system. Uh, and uh, what Oracle has done pretty well is incorporating the work definition and work order as a social, uh, as a social object. So uh, just two terms here that I just talked about. Work definition, by the way, is routing. What was known in EBS as routing is called work definition, which is essentially the sequence of operations and the resources used in each operation, along with the material used in each operation that is set up. Uh, for uh, to make to make a finished product, and work order, as I said before, is nothing but discrete job. So you enable uh, you actually can set up um, both the work definition and the routing as social objects, and any change um, you know to to a particular work order can be visible to people that are using the social module. So you can have chats happening on a work order and those chats then getting associated to the work order. So they pretty much move with the work order and is added to the history of the work order. And um, what is displayed on the social wall uh, for on the uh, Oracle social network wall, uh, you can decide which attributes needs to get displayed and uh, you once you set this up as a social object. So I think this is a pretty neat feature, and I think this will add a lot of productivity to your shop floor environment. Uh, of course, uh, it needs some amount of education and some amount of regulation and structure to be successful, but I think the framework is there to use this. So uh, in setting up your manufacturing plant, uh, a manufacturing plant is an in nothing but an inventory org. Uh, the one difference here is you can set up an inventory org to be either in-house or a contract manufacturing plant. And if you set something up as a contract manufacturing plant, there obviously is a supplier associated with it that impacts the processing, so the way you do contract manufacturing, uh, it is then included in everything related to contract manufacturing. Now, I haven't uh, covered contract manufacturing in detail in our presentation today. But uh, that uh, this is the place where you essentially define uh, a contract manufacturing org, and it it is handled accordingly in your purchasing, uh, AP, uh, in planning, and all all of the associated modules that uh, it touches. The other thing you can do is you can set up standard operations. Now, standard operations are a library of commonly used operations. So, for example, um, you know, in your shop floor, you have a drilling machine uh, and you have a paint shop. And if you set these up as a, a drilling operation as a standard operation, which can then be pulled in. Uh, by any work definition or by any routing that, uh, that when, when that is defined for an assembly. So uh, the resources that could that are typically used uh, for the drilling of uh, for a drill in on the drilling machine are predefined. Um, the uh, maybe even to some extent the amount of work can be uh, standardized and predefined, and then can be modified once it is pulled in for the work definition. So it reduces the amount of time that you typically take to set up 
uh, your verb definitions or your routing. And the standard operation thing again is something that is not there in EBS, which um, these are freestanding uh, library of operations that you can use for different assemblies. I mentioned calendars before, uh, just mentioning it once again. Uh, when you define calendars, you can set up a production calendar, which is a top-down view of all the working times in your organization or your manufacturing plant. And then you can set up a resource calendar. So depending on your resources, maybe uh, if your resource is a certain, um, uh, certain job shop that works at a different, uh, that works at reduced timings during the day, or um, uh, it's a particular person that is only available for certain times during the day. You can set up a different separate resource calendar for that resource. And um, in addition, of course, you can set up work center calendars and um, organization calendars just like in EBS. Work definition, again, is the is different terminology for routing. Uh, what Fusion gives you that I haven't seen in EBS is a visual design of your manufacturing process. So for instance, if you set up your work centers and your departments, uh, and you set up your standard operations, there is a visual uh, graphical uh, user interface that allows you to actually uh, drag and drop your different operations and resources to create your EBS routings and also drag and drop your items, uh, that is, to, to create your work definitions. So uh, you, can, you can do that graphically. The other thing you can also do is create your routings on a spreadsheet and upload them uh, directly from the screen. And now this is a pretty, um, a pretty common requirement uh, across different manufacturing organizations that I have worked with. Uh, everybody wanted an Excel-based tool to be able to define, modify, and define their operations. And in Fusion, we now have that tool. So this is how uh, this is um, uh, an example of how the creating work definition graphical tool looks. Uh, once you pull it up, it shows you uh, all the items on the bomb uh, for that assembly for which you're creating a work definition. It shows you all the standard operations, and you can drag and drop uh, with a visual uh, with a visual screen on. Uh, uh, defining your operations and defining your work definitions. Um, another thing that Fusion has is uh, work definition versions. You can, uh, as you go through your manufacturing process, there many a times there is a need to have different versions of uh, the routing. And it could, may, maybe you want to route depending on um, availability of, um, of your equipment or availability of your resources, you want to route your, um, uh, your product through different uh, channels within your shop floor. Or you would, you're working on refining your manufacturing process and you want to have all of your past versions also available to you to, uh, to look at. So you actually have the ability to create multiple versions of your work definition and keep uh, maintaining uh, the versions through different uh, changes coming in. You can have major changes like deleting or adding an operation, or you could have minor changes like you're just adapting to a resource change. A particular key resource maybe has gone on you know, unexpected vacation, and you just want to adapt to that resource change and have a temporary version of the routing created with a different resource. So you could have all of that um, incorporated. This can also be linked to the life cycle um, of your item. And uh, you can, you, everything can be future effective um, with dates as well. And that will be taken care of during your capacity planning, uh, during your supply chain planning uh, runs. Uh, coming to work order creations, uh, it handles pretty much, you have work order based execution similar to EBS. You have orderless execution like um, when you have work orderless completions, for example, similar to EBS, and then you, you have the review and transfer to transfer transactions to costing. 
So there is not a lot of difference here. I won't go into any, de uh, uh, any more detail on this. You have backflash, auto transact resources, completing in into inventory, all of that is pretty similar uh, to EBS. The one thing that um, we always come across as a requirement in EBS um, environments is to find out what is uh, a, a report that basically comes back with what is pending at a particular work center or at a particular resource. Uh, so you actually have a dispatch list in Fusion that tells you what is the work pending at a particular work center. So if you have a work center operator, uh, they know exactly what, are, what is the queue uh, on which they need to work on and can actually transact uh, the work order or progress the work order from that screen. This, I think, is a pretty neat feature which is well, uh, which is well uh, uh, used and it is demanded by a lot of different places on e uh, wherever we have implemented EBS manufacturing. Another uh, neat feature that comes out of the box is printing labels. Label printing, again, uh, on EBS involves in implementing MSCA and you know, defining, uh, customizing your labels that come with MSC, et cetera. Here with Manufacturing Cloud, label printing comes out of the box. It allows you to, uh, there are la you labels, once you enable it, it will print labels automatically for managing your work orders, reviewing dispatch lists, and it will allow you to customize the label format. So out of the box, it will print labels uh, during operation completion and during the work order completion itself. That pretty much uh, covers uh, the various di differences that I wanted to cover during my presentation. Uh, I'll just hand it over to Doug to summarize. Thanks, Divi. Uh, in review, Manufacturing Cloud uh, essentially can replace EBS work in progress um, with no need for major process changes. But uh, we need to keep in mind that APIs are available for integration with local shop floor systems and your reporting may need to be redeveloped, but usually that's a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, as we always say, with uh, future releases, we expect the, uh, the product to further mature uh, as, as uh, releases, uh, subsequent releases come out. And as with any move from on-premise to the cloud, we highly recommend an assessment so you and your team understand the timelines, costs, risks, and changes in process personnel will have to follow uh, to ultimately make that move to the cloud. So OSI has developed a cloud assessment service. And during this assessment, we provide a full report on the feasibility, risks, and any changes required um, and visibility on gaps. Uh, it is very detailed and specific. We also receive, uh, uh, you would also receive strategy advice on phases, integrations, and any business process change. Uh, we're known for handling these projects quickly uh, for a fast turnaround, providing for a, a, a great return on your investment. Now, if you have any interest in a discussion around what you heard today, feel free to contact us through our website uh, at our contact us form or email, or feel free to call using the information on screen that you're uh, looking at now. And uh, this is the final part in our series, uh, in our webinar series this year between uh, exploring the differences between EBS uh, on-premise and the cloud. Uh, however, we're going to have our next webinar uh, series start in February of 2018, so we're going to have a two-month uh, uh, hiatus there. And uh, once again, if you have any questions uh, that you're interested in, we're about to start our question and answer session. Uh, we've had a couple come in. Uh, but once again, if, uh, feel free to type them in. There's, uh, it's not too late. And if we do not get to them during this session, uh, we will follow up with you uh, uh, through email afterwards. So uh, with that, let's jump into the question and answer session. Um, looks like uh, we had a question come in from uh, Kevin. And uh, Kevin says that there are, his company is currently setting up inventory in Oracle uh, R12, and they're told that ATP was a must as well as reservations activated, that they had to have that. Um, currently, they have a very simple process used now. There's no WIP, no planning, uh, only using items on order, on OM sales orders. Uh, they don't have any transactions into inventory or purchasing receipts and they currently do not use this in EBS 
um, and allow negative balances. Um, they do not want to transact to GL. Uh, is there a way for them to use a simplified uh, setup without ATP? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know where that, uh, what is the context for that um, demand? Uh, why ATP uh, has to be set up? Because we have implemented um, inventory without using ATP implement uh, inventory and sales orders uh, and purchasing without using ATP at all. So uh, absolutely, uh, it can be as simple as you like. Okay, great. Um, and we had another uh, question come in from Srikanth. Um, does Fusion have a shop floor management module? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, there may be some Oracle product that's out there that Oracle will claim does soft shop floor management, but there's nothing. Manufacturing cloud by itself does not come with any shop floor execution system, um, apart from the regular progressing of the work order that you that we just uh, talked about. Um, typically, even on EBS, uh, shop floor management systems were more specialized and more local and a lot of customers I worked with had their own shop floor management systems. But to answer the question, no, EBS, uh, Fusion, as far as I know, does not have one yet. Okay. Um, Dibby, given that uh, manufacturing's, uh, uh, the cloud manufacturing module, um, have you seen any problems with latency uh, in terms of it working with other systems on premise? Um, I have, well, I, that's a question I would not know the answer to right away because we have not integrated manufacturing with any on-prem. I mean, everywhere we have, uh, we've, wherever we have used inventory and manufacturing, it's been as part of one whole, cl the cloud module by itself, and there has been no latency. Uh, but I, I'd like to preface that by saying that we have also not used scanning. Uh, we have not implemented scanning in that. Uh, instance where we implemented manufacturing. So I'm not 100% sure how that will work over the cloud with scanning involved and how that will uh, work in quick, uh, high-speed, repetitive environments. But that's a question maybe for uh, a later date once we do a couple of those. Okay. Um, and it looks like we had another question come in from Jonathan. Uh, he's curious if manufacturing, the manufacturing module uh, integrates with Fusion WMS. No, I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, the Fusion WMS is a product that Oracle acquired about a year ago called Logfire. And I know there is integrations being developed right now, but as of now, it's not integrated out of the box. Um, uh, and that probably that picture is changing even as we speak and Oracle's developing more and more integrations. But right now, if you implement Logfire, you will also need to uh, manage your integrations with the uh, cloud. Okay. Uh, looks like we had another question come in from Navid. Um, how is ASCP integrated with WIP in Fusion? Uh, similar, is it similar to EBS? Yeah, it's pretty similar to EBS. Uh, in uh, ASCP in uh, Fusion is called uh, Planning Cloud Central, which was actually it was the subject of our last um, last month's webinar. And Planning Cloud Central, just like ACP, has a collections process that collects all of the data from the Fusion modules, including WIP, uh, or uh, including Manufacturing Cloud in this instance. And that would collect all of your work orders and the current status of the work orders and components, et cetera. So yes, the way it integrates with EBS is pretty similar. Okay. All right, well, it looks like that's all our questions for now, so we're going to give you five minutes of your day back. Um, but once again, everybody who joined us, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we hope this was valuable, and uh, if you have, uh, we're curious to go back and look at either this webinar or any of our uh, previous in the series. Uh, all of these are hosted on our OSI uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you guys would be able to go on there, take a look, and review, uh, and, and cut to the chase, get to any specific parts. So. Once again, thanks everyone for joining us, and we will uh, see everyone again in February of 2018. Take care. Thank you.